Hello, I'm David Reimer, the director of the Dorothy Gilbert Strings Program, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary. I'm here today with Stephanie Cope, one of the early students of the Strings Program that would become the Dorothy Gerber Strings Program. So uh, welcome, Stephanie, and uh, we're, I'm really excited to hear your story. Let's start out by uh, you telling how you came to be in the Strings Program uh, back in, was it 2000, 2001? I do not remember years, but my <laughs> sister and I, um, my sister started violin. She's older than me by a year and a half. I think she started when she was three with Maggie Pox and, and I wanted to do what she was doing. So I got started with Maggie um, as a Suzuki student when I was four. So we had the cardboard violins and we had the the feet on the floor and then we got the tiny violins and we did the whole Suzuki training. Um, and then at a certain point, my my dad, in um, collaboration with Bob Pattengale, um, and of course the support of my mom, um, wanted to start a youth orchestra so that we had somewhere to apply our skills within a group setting, which is really important for strings. Um, so they... Um, put that together and and my sister and I were in it <laughs> and that was as much as I understood as a kid all right so uh, you were in an orchestra that was that all students or were there also adults in that orchestra and who conducted it but there was a distinct student group mm -hmm. um, that rehearsed in the basement of the crooked tree art center before it was renovated um, in what is now what is in there? The kitchen uh, or the art room? There's a big art room mm -hmm. on the on the west side of the lower level. Um, and I believe Maggie conducted that for a while. And um, mm -hmm. and then Carrie took over the youth orchestra at some point. Right. So um, would you talk about Carrie for a little bit, her impact on you and on the program? Sure. Carrie had a profound impact on my sister and I. Um, we had been studying privately with Dorothy Kunkel, um, who was a Traverse City based teacher, great teacher. Um, I think she's in Florida now, but we would drive every week, once a week, either meet in Elk Rapids or go all the way to her house in Cedar. Um, but then when Carrie moved up, um, we started taking lessons with her. And she she is um, a genius. She's a musical genius and just so smart. Um, but um, she gave us a real love for the music, the feeling of music, not just, you know, technique and all of that, which she is very proficient at also. But mm -hmm. she kind of impressed on us that that. Um, music has to be felt and you have to find that through your technique the better your technique gets the more you can feel within the music and that's the whole point so um she had a profound impact on us great and uh, do you have any memories of that concert at the end of her first year at bayview yeah that was uh probably one of my favorite concerts ever um, mm -hmm. It was so big, and as a kid, it felt so, like, uh, just magical because the scope mm -hmm. of it was so huge. And I played violin, I played French horn, and I played piano, mm -hmm. I think, all on that same concert. And we played, mm -hmm. you know, Copeland's Fanfare for the Common Man up in the balcony, which is just amazing for French horns. And we played Carnival of the Animals, um, me and... Annie Hagelberg, whose last name is now Snyder. Uh, we played the double pianos. Um, I can still play that lick from <laughs> the Carnival of the Animals without my music. Um, that was so much fun um, just because it's it was the grandest experience of music. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't didn't really matter to me what instrument was in my hands, but it was it was that ex experience of music that Carrie really gave to all the kids, um, no matter what they were playing. 
It's really cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, when I talked with Carrie, she talked about the newspaper coverage. Uh, you know, they talked about the enormous number of kids playing. And uh, in the audience that night uh, were also Peter and Gay Cummings, who oh, really? um, <laughs> who were so impressed, as were so many others, at what they saw and heard that day that uh, they decided to invest in the program. And over the years, oh, of course, have God. been... Uh, foundational, you know, fundamental to the success of the program. So that event was powerful in so many ways. So thanks for I have no idea. <laughs> reflecting on that. Yes. So uh, you alluded to a few other instruments. I think one of the things uh, I think is fascinating about you is that you have played a lot of instruments and uh, it seems to be not just dabbled, but you've done a lot with things and you've uh, played in different styles. Could you talk about kind of where your musical path has gone uh, as you've gone into adulthood? Sure. Um, as a student at Concord, we all had to be in band. We all had to be in choir. Um, and then I had that separate strings experience just from my childhood. So um, I was assigned to French horn in, in sixth grade um, and grew to really love it. You know, we I did solo and ensemble a lot. And then in college, I went to the University of Michigan and I, I got into a non-major band, um, mm -hmm. but I quit because it was just too cons time consuming with my dance obligations. And um, starting when I was eight years old, I, I learned piano, took private lessons with Michelle Mitchum. And I think just personally, I really liked understanding music from different angles. And I love the way different instruments feel different. Um, and I can't really say that I have a favorite. It's just there have mm -hmm. been life circumstances along the way that have helped me determine what I'm focusing on. And right. Well, I think of two areas that, that I know where you've played. One has been on the classical side. You've played with the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra for many years. So that was on violin. Did that also include French horn? I, I have done, I, there was one small Sunday gig that I played French horn on um, along with my friend, Jean Favor from mm -hmm. Northern Symphonic Winds. They, they needed four horns or something, and mm -hmm. uh, we stepped in, but that's the only time. Okay. But you've uh, played violin with the chamber orchestra, I guess, on and off for uh, quite a few years then, right? I've been, I guess, on the roster for maybe three years now. Three, okay. something, four, I don't know. All right. Well, and then the other part um, that I'm aware of, at least, is you're, you have a band that you play fiddle in and you also do some of the backing for that. Right. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Yeah, I um, the fiddle folk style has always been really fun for me. And so um, long story short, I met a guitarist and a percussionist who I actually knew from back when I was six, he was my dance teacher in middle school and theater, um, theater teacher too. So we have a trio, an acoustic folk trio called Boundary Water. Um, we write all original tunes um, in the folk vein, uh, but it's just a real fun way to be creative. And we found that our styles really click. So, so Boundary Water is, is me, Bill Wilson on finger style guitar and Gary Schills on percussion. And um, we do everything by ear. We don't write anything down. So that correlates really well with the Suzuki training that I had as a little, little kid learning by ear and being able to read music. They're two very different skills and it's nice to be able to do both. Um, but our band is um, in the process of recording one tune at a time. We have about 20 that we're going to be releasing. Um, we have a Facebook page, Boundary Water Trio. We're also on Instagram. And we are um, sharing those tunes as we go. Um, Bill has a recording studio in his home, and we're just taking our time and um, learning as we go. So if you want to follow us on that journey, um, look us up on Facebook. Well, I'll finish up with a question. Uh, you know, you've experienced the program as a student, and now as you refer to being a mom and as you think about, uh, you know, your family and your kids, 
Um, from that perspective, what, what does it mean to know that the, uh, the Gerber program has been around for 20 years now and is serving kids like yours uh, throughout the region? It's, it's really cool to know that that's um, in the future for my kids. Um, they will all be required to take <laughs> strings in fifth grade because of their specific curriculum. And so that's super exciting. I think one of the most daunting things for parents when you're considering extracurriculars of any kind is like the infrastructure, like how much of the stuff do I have to take care of mm -hmm. um, the getting the equipment and the, and all of that. Um, and so I, the Dorothy Gerber strings program is incredible in that you travel to the schools and it's not an extra car trip um, after school. Mm -hmm. You bring the instruments, they're available to be rented. Um, and just the coordin coordination that the DGSP does on behalf of the students is like a huge weight off the shoulders of moms and dads. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, could you have imagined when you were involved with it back at the beginning that, you know, we'd be here all, all you've been through in your life and yet the program is still going and, uh, you know, we hope for another 20 years uh, just as strong. No, it, it is amazing what um, you have achieved with the program. I think, where it is now is, you know, it's so exciting. I know it's what Carrie um, it envisioned when she was here. Um, and it just, she, her life circumstances carried her away. And it has been reinvigorated so, um, so well with the careful work that you and your staff are doing. Um, it's, it's a dream come true to see how it's how it's blossoming in our community. Great. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today, Stephanie. Uh, really appreciate hearing the stories of your own experience with the program back there at the very beginning. And uh, we're looking forward to having your kids in the program as well in the years to come. Yes, thank you.